Hey guys, since my last video about calcium nitrate and sugar reaction, I've had quite a few interesting comments to think about. So they were asking as to whether this reaction can be applied to sugar rockets, and in this video, we're about to find out. So during the weeks it took me to make this, I found out a few interesting details that my older videos didn't mention, such as that the calcium nitrate I had was in the tetrahydrate form which meant that adding the water to the calcium nitrate and sugar mixture was absolutely pointless and a waste of time. Uh, the other thing was that table sugar was not glucose. It's actually glucose and fructose subunits, which are bound together, uh, and that makes up table sugar. Meaning that my equation was kind of wrong, and my ratio was wrong also. However, the reaction still worked, for some reason, not quite sure why. Now with the issues out of the way, I've changed up my methods so that we can heat the calcium nitrate first. We don't need to worry about decomposition as decomposition is about 700 degrees celsius for calcium nitrate. So once the nitrate is somewhat dry, we can add the sugar. Be careful not to dump the sugar in straight away without allowing the nitrate to cool down a little, or else it may risk uh, combustion on contact which we obviously don't want. We then allow the sugar to melt and mix with the calcium nitrate on a lower heat, and this creates a brown mix that we can then use as fuel for our rocket. Now this is just the general procedure for every step that I tried. Now what varies from step to step is how much calcium nitrate to sugar ratio I tried. That said, I couldn't figure out what ratio of calcium nitrate to sugar to use, as a few of the reactions with sugar and nitrate could occur. So I tried some of them out. The first one, I didn't realize that the sugar was not straight glucose, so I used a ratio of 2 to 11 glucose to nitrate, which, as we can see, didn't work well. However, this was to be expected, as the energy released by glucose was barely enough to break down the large amounts of calcium nitrate present, leading to a low energy release. Then we tried again. The second run, I still didn't realize that the sugar was actually sucrose, so I still used the wrong ratio of 1 to 11. But this run actually gave a lot of nitrogen dioxide, which is both dangerous and interesting since the equation did say it would produce a lot of NO2. But still, no thrust was produced. So, run 3. I was still unaware of the sugar thing and tried to refine the 2 to 11 ratio run by driving all the water away and allowing an easier ignition. Now, you may be wondering, what's up with that beaker and thermometer you're putting above the reaction? Well, that's actually me trying to figure out how much energy is lost to heat and trying to calculate the thrust. But I later gave up on that. Then the fourth try. Okay. I decided to try using some iron oxide as suggested by another comment but I think mine was pretty contaminated with some salts or something because the reaction was all smoke and pretty boring. Worst part is I actually factored in that sugar was actually sucrose in this run. Looking at the rocket's remains, it looks fine, just some rust and reactive product. So I guess it's numeral quattro. Uh, I had a look at potassium nitrate rockets and I realized that I have no idea what formula they're using with the 7 to 13 sugar to nitrate ratio. So I decided, screw it, I'm just gonna try using a 5 to 12 ratio. Yep, 
It's not doing anything. Oh my god! And as you can tell by my reaction, it looked like it went really well. Honestly, I was expecting it to be another fail. So I guess we're taking a step in the right direction. Excited by this, I tried using more sugar again the next day by using a 16 to 6 ratio of sugar to nitrate. I'd like to say that I was really big brain and I was big braining this and, and I did like 40 chests to figure out that it was a 16 to 6 ratio but the reality is I just spilled a lot of sugar into the measuring cup and said yeah why not. This is what happened as a result. I was not expecting a carbon snake, but it was pretty cool to see what would happen if we used too much fuel and not enough oxidizer. The structure of the snake was fragile and weak, but it was interesting to see the huge volume that this reaction would make. I then tried again, but reduced the amount of sugar and got a similar reaction. Then I tried the 3 to 7 ratio method. Honestly, not to hype myself up or anything, but I think that was the best one. It even turned a little bit, despite being blown up. Knowing that this was probably the perfect ratio, I grabbed a clean beaker and was ready to cook. I made a 50 gram version of the 3 to 7 ratio rocket and gave it aluminium to insulate it. A cardboard shell for integrity. Was this the one? Was this the rocket we were searching for? I was crushed. Defeated even. But reviewing this clip, I realized something. The gas was shooting from both ends of the rocket, and there still seemed to be too much sugar, so I set out to fix this. The next day, I got a friend over, and he brought a little Lego car to see if there was any thrust produced at all. We used a 12 to 23 ratio, and then we compacted it into a little tube, like the ones that you see uh, in the potassium nitrate rockets. <laughs> Next, we got creative, made a nice 7 inch deal, I, I mean, uh, model rocket, which also didn't work. That's a good noise. Okay, okay. We even tried wherever the hell this thing is. Still didn't work.
In all of these rockets, oh. the common error is the gas leaking into the front instead of being propelled at the back. So I used a Pepsi can as it provided airtight containment and a nice little nozzle at the back. But it melted only a few seconds into burn. So I tried using a scale and seeing if I could measure any thrust. And again, it failed. It seems like the products aren't able to be cleared out of the way fast enough, and that led to it clogging the whole thing. I tried again using the 5 to 11.5 ratio, which is just a 5 to 12 ratio, but not as rounded up. Hoping the accuracy this time would maybe by some miracle do something. But, as expected, it failed again. Okay, so one last try. I decided that the 5 to 11.5 is actually the best, as it should release 139 molecules of gaseous molecules. Uh, plus, it performed the best out of the others I've tried. This time, I suspended it so that if it did produce any sort of force, we would be able to visually detect this. Okay, so I suppose this concludes my experiments. Now let's review what we've learned so far. The 2 to 11 fuel to oxide ratio provides a lot of fire, but no thrust, and I think it's because it's too much nitrate. The 1 to 12 fuel to oxide ratio had a lot of nitrogen dioxide release. It was boring, but kind of cool. Uh, way too much nitrates, though. The 2 to 11 ratio with 2% iron oxide added to it uh, produced no fire, but there was a lot of gas and no visible thrust. Uh, again, that's probably due to too much nitrate. The 5 to 12 fuel to oxygen ratio is very nice, produced a lot of gas and released a lot of fire, but still no visible thrust. The 16 to 6 fuel to oxidizer ratio formed a really cool carbon snake. Uh, obviously, no thrust, but it was quite cool to watch. 3 to 7 ratio of uh, fuel to oxide produced a lot of fire, but it kind of blew itself up. Uh, don't really know if the thrust 
was produced at all, and the bigger version really sucked. The 12 to 23 fuel to oxide ratio produced lots of fire. Uh, no visible thrust, however, it sounded really intense though. The 5 to 11.5 fuel to oxidizer ratio produced lots of fire, no measurable thrust, however, it did provide some visual thrust. Um, it was probably roughly equal to the 12 to 23 ratio though, if I did suspend the uh, 12 to 23 fuel to oxidizer ratio rocket. It would probably produce a similar amount of thrust, if not less. Now, I understand that adding iron oxide and nozzles to this would increase both the burn rate and thrust. However, this would be too much work for a hobbyist to calculate the nozzle dimensions, and it's just not really worth it. The other runs did have some issues with the gases escaping to the front of the rocket instead of to the back, where it needed to be. However, this probably didn't do much as the weight of the rockets far exceeds any thrust that the rocket could potentially generate. And all the runs did in fact have hollow cores inside of the mix to increase the surface area for combustion reactions to occur, increasing the amount of thrust. Anyway, I believe this video has gone way past overtime, and I thank you all for watching this dumpster fire of a video. If you have some reason as to why calcium nitrate won't work for solid fuel rockets, I would love to see the reasoning. And uh, if you have any calculations too, that would be brilliant. Oh, also, if you do decide to give this a try, and you do succeed, please link me your video. I would love to watch that. Uh, that's it. Thanks. See ya.